So given the first two sessions that have been covered previously, I'm sure we all want to get a better understanding on the crowdfunding ecosystem, and that's precisely what the next discussion session will be addressing. So we'll get greater clarity on this issue. But first, let me introduce you to Dr. Pumpon Tamat Satide, the moderator of this session. Dr. Pumpon is the Assistant Dean for Corporate Communication College of Management at Mahidon University. He's also the Director of Mahidon University Business Incubator. Please welcome Dr. Pumpon. And he'll be joined by four panelists all together. The first panelist, Dr. Saran Samrit Dead Kajan, Executive Director at National Electronics and Computer Technology Center. Please give him a warm welcome. Our second panelist, Mr. Shia Tawat Atipadi, Vice President of Intellectual Property Promotion Association of Thailand. Our third panelist, Dr. Gandhi Leo Pairod, Managing Director of C-ASEAN Center. And our fourth panelist, Dr. Soranan Jiwasurat, Director of Office of the Security at Electronic Transactions and Development Agency. He sent in his apology. He will be joining us shortly. I'll pass it on to Dr. Pumpon. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is a very challenging session because it's the, um, the second day afternoon session is always uh, troublesome. I think, first of all, that you guys had a lot of um, meals, big piece of nice chicken, and that big cheesecake. <coughs> and your stomach now is working quite well, and also it's going to make you quite sleepy, I believe. Also, this session will cover a lot of issues concerning Cybercrime security, that's one of the most important issues in crowdfunding. Also, uh, fraudulence, how can people trust campaigners and how can investors would be willing to invest, but basically would be willing to give, them, give the money to the uh, crowdfunding providers. There are a lot of issues concerning intellectual property, uh, IT security. So, in order to cover such a vast subject, I would like to separate the questions to particular stakeholders. I will start with the um, campaigners themselves, the view of campaigners, like how would campaigners design to make their ideas obvious on the crowdfunding platform, especially in terms of if we have an, a good idea, how can I ensure that other people wouldn't copy the ideas, that's the first issue. The second issue would be concern with investors themselves. If I would like to invest on this idea, how can I trust the crowdfunding platform? And also, what if the crowdfunding platform itself is hacked? What should I do with myself? And the last issues would be concerned with how can I select crowdfunding platforms? Yes, I think we, you all know that crowdfunding is quite a new, well, emerging activity in Thailand. Uh, we need a lot of clarifications, especially in terms of vocabularies. There are terms like curation, basically content management. What is it? Uh, this curation is basically concerned with all the content compilations we see is on YouTube. But when you use in the crowdfunding platform, this thing is totally different. We we'll talk more about it. Well, should I start with some <clears throat> questions concerning uh, campaigner itself? Uh, Dr. Saran has been involved with electronic commerce. Also, he has been involved with some sort of uh, campaigns. Let's say neck tech people. You guys know about neck tech, right? Hopefully. It's a one of the uh, intelligence. No, no not, it, not intelligence. <laughs> no. It's one of the research center. Well, we normally call these neck tech people as a senior, clever scientists, right? Yeah, we, we are trying to be young, not senior. Oh, okay, right. 
Judging from your um, grey hair, yes, I believe yeah, so. Yes, yes, too much now, grey hair. Too much now. Yeah. Uh, from your experience, in terms of that, uh, in terms of things like you would like to promote, uh, let's say the idea to attract investor to give the money to the new ideas. As far as you're concerned, how would you do it? What kind of activities and how can you know investor be interested in your ideas? Well, I think one thing so we I think we have to start with the uh, the problems or the topics that uh, we think is the is the thing that we should do. Uh, for example, uh, we look at the the microscope. Uh, how can uh, everyone has uh, their own mi microscope? Uh, we look at the uh, let's say tablet or even the smartphone, and uh, all the devices today have the uh, at least one camera, or back or front or both, right? But uh, those cameras cannot uh, capture or record the uh, a video clip or image in the micro world because it's not a microscope. Right? If, when you try to uh, capture the, the, the object uh, very close, it's blur, right? So we, we uh, bring that problem into the team and said, hey, can we do that? Can we transform the tablet into the digital microscope? And that microscope can uh, share the image or the video, video clip with others. Uh, with that problem, we, again, we move a little bit further. Uh, we uh, search uh, for the patterns. We search for the uh, uh, scientific and technical articles and even the products. Uh, available uh, in the past and in today uh, market, uh, whether our ideas uh, are similar to those or not. And uh, we found some of the, uh, of the work uh, by uh, outside Thailand, uh, similar to what we are uh, planning to do. But uh, we have to uh, look uh, deeply in terms of uh, scientific and technical issues, uh, whether we have uh, some holes or some rooms uh, to uh, find some patterns. So once we have that, we start uh, to uh, test our idea in the lab uh, without requesting uh, any budget uh, from the research institute, because we already have the, the equipment uh, some other equipment, we think we can use it to uh, test our idea. And then uh, once uh, it is okay, we talk, I talk to our team that, hey, what can we do in the next step? Uh, can we talk to uh, the investor? Or do we have to license to a company? Do they believe us? And then uh, suddenly, uh, we just heard about crowdfunding. Ah. Uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, whatever you name it. What, what, when was it happen? Sorry. Uh, I think the crowdfunding, we, we heard about it uh, last year, about, uh, well, January uh, last year. But uh, at that time, we uh, didn't have uh, any uh, projects or topics that we would like to explore uh, in the crowdfunding platform uh, until, I think, around... Uh, August last year, uh, we have the problems of uh, transforming the, the mobile devices into a digital microscope. And then uh, we also uh, did uh, in parallel to convince uh, my colleagues that, hey, we should do this uh, in the crowdfunding platform. Uh, they didn't know. They said, what it is? I said, you look at this key stack. Kickstarter, you look at the Indiegogo, yes. right? And then uh, I think the team has uh, motivation. I think this is the key, the key thing. So basically, you're looking for a way to raise funds for your research. Right. <laughs> and then you heard about this term, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding. So only last year. Last year. And after that, how much money did you get? Well, uh, we just, we, I think we just the research center. We are not the private company, so we are not looking for profit. Ah. We just uh, we think that this is the, the way that we can explore and, and learn something from this new platform for us, right? So uh, we said, okay, we, we talk, I talked to our team that uh, how much do you need? 
uh, in order to uh, build, let's say, a semi or, or fully automatic uh, machine uh, uh, for making the lenses for the mobile device. Uh, they said, well, probably around 5,000 US is enough. Right? I said, okay, just put that in your goal, 5,000. Uh, but uh, the day we started uh, was around uh, 11 of December last year, oh. uh, which December. was not the right time. Because uh, December, we had many holidays. Yes, yes. Right? Uh, but uh, I, I told my team that, hey, we didn't have a choice. We should do it. Right? Just one month. They said, well, typically, they, uh, they will uh, probably uh, do it for 45 or uh, 60 days. One month is too short. Right? I said, no, we don't have time. We need to prove that uh, this new platform is good enough uh, for us to learn something and, and probably move forward uh, in the future. So uh, the time was not at the right time. One month was very tight. And uh, well, we, we, we did it. Just right? in one month. And I think the thing that we do is we, we combine. We combine Western and Eastern lifestyle together. So uh, in the Western lifestyle, we use internet, social network, or whatever uh, we have uh, in the virtual uh, internet community. And the Eastern style is uh, based on trust, based on the way we, we do what, uh, let, let me uh, put it in Thai, Thot Katin, Thot Papa. Right, right. Okay. okay. Uh, it's like we have something like this one that I show you today. Like we have this one. We have uh, this thing, packaging. We, we, we do it by 3D printer in the lab. And inside, inside here, we have the lens here. Uh, we call it a uh, dual lens microscope. They have uh, two lenses in one piece, uh, two magnifications. And why we need this one? This one is you can put your, let me borrow your phone. You can put your phone here. Right? Let's say you have the front camera, you have your lens on top here, you slide it in, you put glass slide in, yes. and they have the right source that you can turn it on. Right? You have this knob, you can adjust the, you can adjust the height yes. uh, of the object. Uh, once we have this, we said, uh, we show it to you, you said, oh, I want it. Ah, can right. I have it then? And then, and then you, 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 you ask us that. I don't want to put money ah. in the Kickstarter or in the Coco. I can give, I, you can give me cash right now. And most of our colleagues did that. They said they don't want to put it in the crowdfunding. They don't want to, to do it uh, via uh, PayPal or via transfer. They don't want to do that. I have cash and I want, it, I want to give it to you now. So we also collect some money from that way too. Uh -huh. So we combine Western and Eastern style right. together. And for, and for those of you guys who are not Thai, Hei is a motivational, uh, is a motivational <laughs> express. When you would like to push your friends to do something, you say, Hey, do it, go for it, give it a go, that sort of thing. But pause on to, to Dr. Gandhi. Dr. Gandhi has done something like this as well, but it's not in terms of technical or research program, but she did it with her book. Yes. What, what happened at that time? Um, well, actually, when the crowdfunding ecosystem, um, I was once a campaigner, the creator of the book, and go through the, um, um, the crowdfunding platform, the very own Thai crowdfunding platform, and, and I would like to give the credit to the afterward people, and it's you know, essentially, they're here today. Can you stand up and show your face just a little bit? Nam Cho and Nathan Prao. Ah. Yep. They came to me very, very early day. You know, I think um, last year, very beginning of the last year, that they want to do the crowdfunding for book. So I was an academic. I wrote stuff. So I said, yeah, that's pretty cool because um, I have my manuscript ready and I'm too lazy to go talk to a pub publisher, especially those arrogant 
publishers. <laughs> yeah, I think my book is cool, so yeah, um, I don't really need to go back them. So it comes around, um, um, Kun Jo and uh, John Prow said um, they would like to do something real good for the Thai society. They would like to connect the writer and the reader together. So here I am, so I launched my second book, which has happened to be the first book to launch on the afterward um, platforms. So it was successfully done. So come today when I have to talk in these sessions, um, we go focusing on copyright, you know, intellectual property, fraud, securities. I have to admit, you guys, um, at the day that I, um, you know, went with afterward crowdfunding platform, none of this issue was in my mind at all. I'm sorry, I was no, so naive. I said, well, I want my book out. I don't really care about IP because I, I think because it's the printing and publication is automatic in terms of copyright, am I correct? So I, I didn't think of you know, any is kind of issue at all. Yeah, but the first time when I saw your campaigns, I didn't believe it. What's that? Dr. Kandi wouldn't have any problem with money. But why, why did you <laughs> want this sort of money? I didn't understand at all, so I didn't give her anything. Well, <laughs> we've been close friends though, but... No, the Phuong Pong's a dear friend of mine, and he was not my, you know, he's, he's not my supporter in the book, <laughs> and I'm still angry at him until today. Um, you're right, money is not, well, I can't say money is not an issue, but I it want is. to stir up in terms of the system. It's not cool if you just get my, you know, my husband money to get, launch my book, so it's not what we'd like to do. I think that would come back to the, what Mr. Manoj said this morning is about what kind of model, how can we configure crowdfunding model for Thailand. We start with trust, social network, and then also the mindset of the people concerning about why are they doing this? What, are, what is she trying to achieve on this? So at that time, about um, six months ago, I didn't get any ideas about crowdfunding in terms of donation or participation at all. But after that, it began to kick out in terms of, well, I have to, to, to manage incubator for my university. And then money is not an issue, but it's always a problem. So we need more and more money. I went to talk to the banks. The bank said, yes, we can support you. After you can verify that you are not in the startup phase. And we're looking for ways to leverage new entrepreneurs. But the bank would say, no, no, no. If you can confirm that these entrepreneurs is basically in the uh, spin-off for it, I can put the money in it. But that would come to, to an issue that uh, both Dr. Saran and Dr. Gandhi didn't actually um, pay attention on fraud and securities, but... Um, Dr. Hupan, give me straight. I yes. wasn't paying attention because I didn't care much about it because my first objective and companion is to, to get my book out. Yes. Well, today I changed my role. I'm, doing, yeah, I'm writing a second book for them. And also, I am a, would like to be a crowdfunding platform provider. And I see that it could be something that we really need to discuss in length. I do not have really a definite answer to you at the moment. Yes. But I do have a lot of idea that I want, you know, this ecosystem to run. Okay, I, I still love you anyway. <laughs> well, when we talk about trust and we talk about idea that's being exposed to um, social media, that would come to the fact that, let's say Ajahn Gandhi has a bright idea about this book. When I saw it, it is my lovely friend. I can copy her ideas. But how can Dr. Gandhi protect her ideas? How can uh, intellectual property management can play a significant role in this crowdfunding system? Okay, thank you. First of all, I, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Gandhi that this is, this is the very good indicator that her, her product is, is good. It had been copied already. Uh, it shall be popular in the near future. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, from the campaign point of view, I think uh, normally the campaign have, have to do the IP management. What, what I, I almost always tell everybody in relation to, to I, who have IP. Uh, first, you have to have IP acquisition, how to allocate technology allocate IP and use with your product. Oh, I will give one example for you. This pen. This is multi-function. Multi so I can use it as the, I use red ink, uh, black ink, as well as pencil. Okay. You may see that 
uh, this pen has a specific mechanism. This is IP. Uh, however, the specific mechanism uh, could be derived from, from a number of owners, not just a single one. Uh, how to allocate the, the IP means what? Mean you have to negotiate with each of the owners of the IP. And upon the approval of the owners, you can produce this one and exploit it to the market. But before exploitation, you have to study further if the protection of each IP on this is strong enough. Uh, that, that's the other matter. That, that's the second one, second management, uh, IP protection. Uh, in terms of IP protection, they have two types of IP protection. First, a registration scheme. That means what? That means you, you have to file, you have to prepare very complicated application, file in your own country and abroad also. If you don't file your IP protection, IP application abroad, means what? Means the right of such IP shall be public domain in the other countries to which you, you, you don't file the application. That's very serious. That means you have to invest a lot of money. You have to take uh, so much time during the pending period. Before, this is very, very tough management of, of IP. And that leading to huge amount of money that you have to invest for the, the IP protection for this registration scheme. Uh, from my past experience, patent registration if you would like to file the patent uh, protection, let's say 80% um, of the economies in, in the world, you have to spend your money about around 15 million baht. 15 million baht for one single patent application in majority of, of, of economies. Well, well, let's say I would like, well, I have invention though, and I would like to protect my invention. Right. That means that I have to prepare this sort of money to protect exactly. myself before I start doing crowdfunding. Ex exactly. Uh, that is a huge amount of money. I, I have to raise fund before start raise funding uh, uh, again. That is right, that is right. And, and it, it, could be, it could be possible that, that the patent that you file may be rejected. <laughs> due to due to patentability. Therefore, nobody could currently when you file, you invest such amount of money. Yes. It it sh it shall be worth or not. Okay. Therefore, you have. Very Jangali, would you like to say anything? I, well, these questions that I actually carried from home, and I'm really glad to meet you today. Um, what if the idea is not fully, is not completed yet? That's why we launched the idea through crowdfunding, and that is the main purpose of startup. So you got the idea, and you expect them to register in IP system. I think it somehow has conflict to oneself. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, therefore, to my opinion, I try to suggest uh, the, 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 the IP owner that you have to take a risk. You have to take the risk of when uh, the, the, the first safeguard is that you have to file your patent registration. Let's let put into innovation because we have various types of, of IP and the protection is a is, is, is different story. Uh, for example, if, if Ms. Gandhi has copyright worth, right, it is automatically protected after you, you complete uh, your work. Uh, you don't have to file any uh, registration it is, it is protected automatically. However, if we move into such type of uh, pattern design, you have to file uh, pattern registration. However, uh, as I mentioned about IP management, even though the filing scheme, the protection scheme, you have to select the proper countries. Right. Therefore, you have to choose it first. Uh, and it has several types of, 
of uh, model. Uh, in Thailand, we have uh, we, we become the, the member of PCT Patent Cooperating System. Uh, this is not the registration scheme, but it is some kind like like uh, the procedure that helps you to extend time of payment. That means you file it in Thailand once with one single application, uh, one language, you use one pattern attorney. And according to this scheme, it extends your time into 30 months uh, after filing in each country. The, the 15 million baht you have to pay after 30 months. After 30 months. Right. Uh, so okay. this, is, this is how we manage the. Okay, the I get the protection. idea about how to prevent my idea stolen from the point of the IP management. Uh, Dr. Saran, would you like to add anything? Yeah, let me add uh, something here. Uh, I think we talk about uh, patterns and even the copyright uh, to, pe to protect our own ideas. Uh, let me put it this way it cannot protect 100%. Uh, it's like uh, it's like you some of you uh, hold the uh, small fortune things to protect cost or to protect the evil, right? So that uh, not guarantee that uh, you are protected 100%. Uh, but the thing is, you have 50 million baht for nothing, right? Basically. You have you have the thing is you have to uh, lay your foundation, right? right. Uh, especially for IP, and then you uh, move forward uh, to explore it uh, as many as possible. As you can see that from the mobile phone, uh, Samsung suing, uh, Apple, Apple suing Samsung all the time. So it's just like uh, you just have something to, to protect you. And if you don't have it, someone will sue you easily. But if you have it, someone will uh, delay a little bit. They will look at you and say, oh, probably it's not worth to sue you because you already have the portfolio of IPs. Right. So, but it, well, Dr. Gandhi mentioned something very interesting. She said that if we don't have a, if she doesn't have a complete idea about the new thing and she would like to raise funds for it, uh, there has been big issues in US market that is she really going to do it? It's going to be fraud ideas. Uh, that this campaign would actually produce any fruitful output and outcomes. Uh, in terms of internet crime, we're lucky enough to have Dr. Soranan from EDA, who has been working with the um, uh, cyber security. Um, could you share us a little bit in terms of fraud, in terms of uh, people use ideas to raise funds, or not just really to, to raise funds though, but you know, we have a lot of uh, social media as a platform for e-commerce right now. How would you help all those consumers and investors to protect themselves from, well, from, from paying or buying or investing on something? That okay, they think it's um, hard questions. <laughs> we have to raise awareness. First of all, I have to apologize um, to, uh, for being late here. I just know that I have to be here in these mornings. <laughs> and um, the person who you know, assigned me to be here, she has to she is quite busy at the moment, Mrs. Sulankana, with the bills, the new, the new digital economy bills. We have to go around to many you know, organizations and also the government agency to um, try to clarify what will be the intention of the government when we want to promote digital economies. And you know, I'm too small here to fit her shoes. Her shoe is quite big. <laughs> so, yeah. so I try to be honest and try to be, um, you know, give opinion in what the area what I'm expert with. Uh, um, just want to challenge the things about the crowdfunding first, and then I'll go to the the question about the you know the flaw and the the problem in the internet uh, societies. Um, I myself also a big fan of the crowdfunding. I use a lot of products from the crowdfunding projects, including the watch that I use. I got a watch well, when it was a design, my pebble watch. And that design, you know, um, just want to talk a little more about IP. I don't think that, you know, the IP will protect anything, intellectual properties. Um, that's a lot of example of the, the idea that could not be, could, couldn't be protected by IP. 
But what I believe is that um, the communities will protect your intellectual properties. Um, we see a lot of singers who just, you know, um, one, uh, what, one of my favorite singers, she's from, you know, California, but originally she's from Hawaii. She, you know, pays all her instruments by herself. She do the beatbox, she do the guitar, she do the pianos, and she mix everything by herself. She put that in album, and she raised the, you know, the, the funding for her album from the car fundings. And that's a lot of singers trying to, you know, replicate what she did. And none of them has a success, you know, um, um, and get an album. And what I believe is that um, in the future, uh, in, at, at the moment, the community will dominate a lot. I'm trying to say that this one is a good idea, it's a cool idea, and this one is the, origin, uh, is, is the originals. We see the games, that came from a country, very, very small country, Estonia, Angry Bird. We see a lot of, um, you know, Angry Bird-like game, but none of them is an Angry Bird. And I didn't, I, I always see that Angry Bird only, only find the IP for just the collectors. But the way the Angry Bird sing about the game, about the, you know, that kind of uh, uh, velocities, the slings, anything, there's no prediction on that IP. And none of the game can replicate that. So what I believe is that the community will, uh, what I say, I call it is self-regulate, how to use the idea and how to utilize the idea and how to get the idea to be a product or a project. About the internet clams, you know, um, I don't have to repeat again. So Thailand is the heaven of? for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> So we 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 are not very strong in the IT securities. We has been used by other people, um, including individual and also I, what I believe is also the state sponsor attack, and um, a lot of cases that uh, the recent cases that attacking one of the big entertainment company in the Hollywood, also used a couple of computer in Thailand, attacking uh, that companies. So the. What I believe is that, what I see in the, in the past is that um, our facilities, our means, the government size, and also the academic size, is not so strong. But we have a very, very strong in the financial sectors. But, but let's say, um, I'm not going to talk about equity crowdfunding, but let's say I would like to do the donation crowdfunding. Uh -huh. I would like to raise money around 10,000 baht okay. to build a bridge for the specific temples in the northern part of Thailand. Mm -hmm. And I told all my friends in my social network, I will give you guys one month to raise funds. After one month, I close it. I get around, let's say, 20,000, and I, then I disappear. Okay. Lovely man. Yeah. We see a lot of this kind of Furby things. Yes. That, you know, the starting of this kind of first gram. Yes. Starting from when we want to have Furby for our kid. And you see a lot of Facebook that they're trying to sell cheap Furbies. And you say, oh, I can, cannot buy Furby because the government said that Furby is not the standard product that can import to our countries. So why don't we just go to Facebook and get the Furbies? So that's a business, the scam business trying to advertise. I can sell a cheap Furbies. It can be the same as the bill, the hand bill, the file that you put and you paste it on the you know, BTS stations. Say that I also sell a cheap Furbies. I think that the media or the computer or social media, uh, the, the social network is just the, the media to carry the message. That fraud scam can be in any channels. It can be on the radio, it can be on the TV, it can be on the social media. We just separate two things. One is the scam, the other one is the platform. And, uh, but the problem is that the platform on the internet and social media is very, very fast. And it's very, very easy. You might spend time to, to prepare the bill, and you might have to, a lot of people to go to a BTS station and to put the bill that you're selling cheap Furby. But you can do everything by yourselves. 
studying, you know, you open the uh, whatever software that you use to edit your, you know, poster and handbill. But how you can upload we, it in the how first can we books. help investors, consumers, or donors? What, what I'm trying to say is that um, the thing, the problem, the other problem in our internet society is that we do not educate our user enough. And we, as a government, as you know, um, I also call myself, because most of the, you know, our panelists are all ties. I also consider myself as Lurkua. It's a big board that's run very, very slow, compelling the boards that the George, that the, yeah, like Dr. Gandhi, you know. She's run very, very, very fast. <laughs> but we have to look at the 67 something million people. So you, you're saying like at the end of the day, who would be responsible for a fraud campaign is the consumers themselves. They have to be awareness, they have to be vigilant. They have to, to, to be honest, uh, for t if, if the answer is it's a government, it makes me look very good, but I don't think it's working. What I believe is that it has to be uh, the public and private partnership. The banks, as I um, try to you know, um, follow up and cross my point, the bank is very, very, very strong. The fraud at the banks always happen at the customer size. And we have to educate the customer, and the customer is also the people. And if they fail for one scam case for the bank, they will fail for all the case. Doesn't matter who is the service provider or doesn't matter that kind of uh, scam scenario is. Right. Mr. Tayesha, what would you like to add something? Yes, yes. in terms of law, uh, we, we, have, we, have, we have a specific law, which is the penal code. Um, it's already penalized these types of, of that we call the act of, of public cheating, uh, which have very, very, very high imprisonment. Um, but the problem is that how we could, we could make the forensic trace back. Yes. Yes. I think uh, Dr. Surupon may help me to clarify this matter yes. because, because doing anything under internet, we could be able to trace back by by a specific program and by the expertise of, of uh, we have, I think we have a uh, police division. I think traceability, that sort of thing. I would take the chance after you. Um, I would like to share my point of view of two issues that just raised earlier. The one is uh, intellectual property and fraud and scam. For intellectual property, the question that they ask you, um, I, oh, well, thank you so much for the, for the answers. But what I'm thinking, there, we probably don't need a set of formula. We probably don't need another set of regulations because um, to regulate it could prevent us from growing. I believe that the ecosystem should manage itself and it should regulate itself. Take IP for example. If you want to protect it, and I agree with you, Dr. Shonan, that um, IP can't protect anything. It's a matter of how you see the opportunity out of it. So if you want to open up, so details. So you got opportunity and challenges or risk together. Opportunity to get more fund because under, people understand you know, your idea even more. The risk of having, you know, get your idea stolen. So it's something is not, I don't think we can create a law or the rule out here. It's all about the balancing act. You know, what kind of, what, what, what would fit best in your idea and your situations and also a, as well as your business. So that's my point of view towards the, the IP issues. The other issue is about fraud and scam. Um, yeah, I think fraud and scam can happen, uh, can happen in so many, so many ways. Fraud from campaigner, for idea initiator. So, so, so that I got an idea and then one day I got money and disappear. Just like what your, your example. Crowdfunding platform itself could be the origination of the fraud. So out of nowhere, I open the website and say this is the crowdfunding platforms, and once again, they disappear. This whole thing, uh, well, the discussion this morning, uh, really enlightened that how we're gonna help prevent this. You can help prevent the investors, you know, by setting up certain rules and regulations. Once again, um, you know, the investment and the track records, you know, the, the forensic track that you just mentioned about, and also how they invested. Or we look at you know, the time frame that we have done. But last but not least, I, I'm probably, uh, I still believe that somehow um, the fraud, 
they have to work very, very hard to outsmart the wisdom of the crowd. Because I strongly believe that if you want to come in in a crowd ecosystem, you see a new idea, you, you, you're open to the risk. And as well as um, with the digital economy, with the information flowing so fast, we get to learn um, better than before. So instead of actually set up a certain rule and strict rules, we can help campaign, educate um, the society, all the three parties. We can come up with a fraud listing. If we have the listed company, why not fraud listing? Why don't we have the scam listing? And this is, could be something that we can help the society, you know, maintain momentum itself without create too many rules. Right, thank you. Dr. Soran, would you like to? Yes. Um, just want to, you know, add a little comment to Dr. Gandhi. That list will be very, very big. <laughs> Uh, we can do it the other ways. We can have the white list, the good crowdfunding, crowdfunding platform, you know, and that's also an example that in my idea, I think it's, it's the same as the crowdfunding platform that we are using. It's a mobile application. It's a, you know, like um, Google Play or Apple Stores. These are also one of the crowdfunding plat platform. You have the idea, you will write application, you post to the public, to a formal channels and then the, the public, the community response. You can start it with free download, trial versions, and then after that, you can have a paid versions. What the, the public uh, must know is that um, now we have no lose, we have no loss to help to protect the, 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 the you know, like people. Uh, we saw a lot of um, what we call is, um, the malicious applications. It's a malware. Uh, we just put it that on the platform, and we just want to steal data, personal information, or whatever of you. One suggestion, as a, you know, later, is very, very easy. When I have to give recommendation to the public that uh, which one, which application is safe for you to use, I will come back to the crowdfunding. You look at the review. That is the community comment, right? If you get a good, very good review, and that application have, you know, has like million, 10 million download, it has like 20 million eyeballs already look at the applications, you are safe. The same as the crowdfunding platform. You are very new, this, this website is very new, and no one ever mentioned about this website before, this project before. That might be a problem. The other thing is that, uh, just follow up the, on the, the fraud issues. Um, at EDDA, we have two labs that we just set up. Um, in the past three years, we are like the firefighters. We're trying to go around the website, this website, as you know, the phishing website, the scam websites, and the hacking website, the malware website, and trying to, um, to solve this problem in the past three years. We have the team called Tyser. And we got the, you know, all the information. Every time that um, the, the internet communities recognize some malicious activity from Thailand, there has no one to talk to except us. So we are like the point of contact of the countries, taking care of this problem. We also help the loyal Thai police. When we deal with the technologies, the problem is that we do not have, the, we do not have enough competent officers. We drop a lot of cases because we just do not have technologies to investigate, to get the bad guy, and put them into the jail. And we spend years learning how to do digital forensics. So we be able to, you know, I think that we can do a lot of things more than those technicians at Mabun Kong do. Right, it seems like in order to make the ecosystem for crowdfunding to work effectively, we have to increase our knowledge. Of course, in the, the term of the campaigners as well as investors as well. But then when we talk back to campaigners and they would like to promote their ideas on the crowdfunding platform, um, as far as you're concerned, Dr. Sarana, Dr. Gandhi, what, what are you expecting that crowdfunding provider would help you? Let's say to protect you, to promote you effectively, to let people actually uh, know that you are doing or asking for some particular uh, money or, or help, what, what, what basically are you looking for crowdfunding providers to support, Dr. Saran? Uh, 
I think we look for, I think we, we, we actually hope uh, that uh, they can help us to uh, promote and uh, let the campaign uh, finish uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we hope in, in that way. But uh, we found that they help, but uh, not enough. Uh, I think probably uh, the time, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the time was tight. Uh, the, the day that we started uh, was not at the right time. Uh, and that's why I think we have to uh, do it by our own way in the Eastern style. And, uh, but I think uh, if we, we plan it at once, let's say we have 45 or 60 days, uh, and we uh, put some strategy, let, for example, if we uh, reduce the, uh, the campaign goal, let's say from 5,000 to four or 3,000, uh, in that way it's like uh, mentally, uh, when let's say you are the newcomers, and you look at this campaign and you said, oh, it's already uh, reached the goal. So this means that this is real. And, uh, and this means that if you uh, donate some uh, money in that, uh, you will definitely uh, get the, the first prototype uh, for you to play with. So uh, there are some strategies that we can use uh, to, uh, in the crowdfunding platform. And uh, I think that there are also some, let's say, brokers that you can contact and then ask them to help. So there are many ways that you can do uh -huh, in, in this uh, crowdfunding. But that would be strategies for campaigners campaigner themselves, right? Right, right. Uh, Jean Gandhi, what, what, would you like, what are you expecting for crowdfunding providers to support? Um, let me speak on, my, on behalf of CRCN, that, um, the organization that we work with. And we, we, we're going to develop crowdfunding platforms. We're hoping to do the equities and that because we would like to um, have this platform to support our activities, which is to support the startup to grow um, domestically, regionally, and globally. So in, if I speak on CRCN behalf, I don't think this is a crowdfunding platform. It's a platform that we're going to make a lot of money for the crowdfunding provi providers. But it's the main aim that we would like to, to be connecting, you know, it's connecting spot or alternative for the investment, for the great idea, people who are willing to invest and to grow on together. So the main objective is not making money out of it, but the main objective for my ZRZN is to help being a platform for the startup to grow. So what I would expect, what I'm thinking that I would provide, um, we, have, we are about to launch the, the project we call Startup Runway. Runway like um, you know, runway and you know, go sky high. Um, we started out with uh, idea pitching, um, get you know, expert and commentator to, to say what well, this is a good idea or things to be improved and go on to the second step. I call this as a more like um, incubating or some incubating. So you get a good idea, you need to really have a good mindset of business, understand the legal, the you know, financial issues, come up with the market testing, come up with the prototype. And the next step is to get the fund. You know, you can go to the bank or either to crowdfunding. So what I would provide, which I, which I, this is my passion that I'm following on, that it's not just a platform, but basically it's advice to the campaigner. You know, this is the right way to do. You, I don't think we should be just, you know, just a, a platform that people can take their own risk and without responsible for anything. Um, I believe that we need to take charge of, you know, get this ecosystem running, you know, properly in the right speed, in the right directions. So I would like what, what I'm dreaming of, you know, the legal advice, I know it's gonna be really costly, all the lawyers are expensive and all that. But that's something that we, we and campaign need to talk. You know, what kind of risk we can bear, what kind of invest we can co-invest together. There's another issue concerning crowdfunding providers, especially in the US and UK markets. Um, some platform, they seem to be um, paying specific preferences on particular campaigns, what the, the market call curation. I would like to put my preference on the top. I would like to say less about other ideas which I would like. How would you manage all these? Of course, sometimes when you have great idea about biotechnology, you particularly keen about it, but chemical? No, not this time. It's not organic enough for you. And then you would put it in the lower rank. How would you maintain all these combinations 
to, to ensure that you know, all those people who would like to, to raise funds would have the same amount of viewers. Well, yes and no, good and bad, as Anpum Pond, because um, curating could be, you know, by your definition, could be also good and bad. But why I see that if, if some idea has really great potential, why not? So, great potential greater than the other one, the answer is, why not? You have to try. <laughs> That's my short answer. Yeah, but you are the one basically control the platform. You can manipulate anything. I like it, that idea. I put it first. That idea, no, I don't like them others. Later on, then. It's happened in the entire community. It's about circle, close relationship, and community as well. Dr. Saran, have you got any idea concerning this issue? Um, may I add something here? Yes. Um, I think that the media is no longer in the, me in the hand of the media. The voice is in the, in the hand of the communities. That's the, if, if you look at the moment, um, I no longer spend my time on TV. I always spend my time on YouTube. And I do not read news on the whatever newspaper online websites. I read news on the Facebook. The same as other. Yes. Right? You don't have the voice. No. You control the platform, of course, yes. You can set preference. But the voice still be the communities. Right. I, I don't know, I just look at the, that kind of optimistic way. <laughs> Dr. Saran, would you like to? Uh, I think I think I, I might put it in another way. Uh, one thing is, right now we are, I mean, as the customer, let's say, as, as the campaigner, uh, why I chose Kickstarter, why I chose Indiegogo. Indiegogo yes. So uh, I think uh, at this moment, we have to look uh, for the platforms that uh, people trust. If you, let's say, you don't know about Indiegogo, and then uh, you put it in that, and uh, many people say, what is Indie or Coco? Uh, how many projects or how many campaigns uh, do they have? And how many already uh, successful, right? So we have to look at the history or the credit of that platform before the campaigners uh, decide to put their idea into that uh, platform. But I think in the future, uh, there will be many crowdfunding platforms. And I believe that uh, in that time, uh, the crowdfunding platform will have some promotions to uh, persuade you to use their platform. So I think that uh, we can choose. But at this moment, we have to look at the credit or the history or the record of that platform before we decide. Yes, so let me put first a comment, in terms of of a uh, campaigner. I think one, one most important liabilities of campaigner is that dissemination of information. They have to give as much as possible information related to, to, to himself, themselves. Uh, if we talk about innovation, uh, we have to talk about uh, details of, of, of IP, the owner of IP, how you manage your IP, what is the details of IP protection? Uh, how how the the campaigner plan for exploitation of such IP, uh, as well as the legal document related IP. This is all necessary things that that the campaigner must put uh, into consideration. H however, I think we will talk further about the regulators. Yeah. Uh, this. I'll come back right. and talk about this later. Okay. Before um, jumping to regulator side, is there any questions from participants at all? I know you guys are sleepy, so yes, very nice lady. You can go to my shop. I sell jewelry. Uh, the lady standing up there on the fourth table on this row. Very nice question. Not yet. Thank you. I want to ask to Mr. Chayata. Uh, I want to uh, want uh, like this. We always talk between the protecting and sharing. And uh, for IP, we've been talk about how to protect our IP, but 
for content industry like us, sometimes sharing IP is give us a lot of benefits. And I want to ask to Mr. Chanata and other audience uh, if maybe somebody here uh, already have experience in commons, common create, uh, creative commons. I think that's maybe one of a kind of creative uh, crowd wisdom or crowd power that might be uh, in the future will join to the crowdfunding or crowdsourcing. It's, uh, I haven't studied a lot about uh, the creative commons, but maybe somebody here could share about creative commons and how we can use it in terms of uh, waking the uh, crowd wisdom and crowd power. That's, thank you. Okay, about, about IP protection. Actually, as mentioned earlier, uh, there are several types of IP. And, I, and the different types of IP itself, it has, it has two ways of protection. First, registration scheme, right? And the other, the autonomous scheme. Uh, for copyright work, it is protected automatically. And not, not, not only the copyright, but also the technical know-how uh, and so-called so trade secret. It is automatically protected. Uh, how, how we could protect the, 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 the right of, of, of technical know-how? We, we decided we use the contractual protection we have to have the, a very good lawyer uh, to do the contract for you, uh, to keep secrecy of, of such know-how uh, in the desk. Uh, not only keeping it, but the, the, the contract must have a provision stating that the one who knows this secrecy must not uh, use it, must, must not utilize it by his own or her own. This is the, the, the other types of, of protection, we could do the contractual protection also. This is, this is the other scheme of, of IP protection. And don't be afraid of, of, of violation or piracy of, of IP. Because in some, as mentioned earlier, Gandhi mentioned earlier, uh, some types of IP, for example, the, the fashion thing, the fashion design like this, uh, even though it has been protected by, automatically as the copyrighted work. But when we use it, the owner, regardless of protection, they try to push it as soon as possible and try to, to sell it as soon as possible. No IP protection is in consideration of, of a fashion business, something like this. Therefore, um, I think don't, don't, don't think that uh, the IP protection is barrier of doing business. It is not. You could do it. And w what we would be clever is to manage, manage with the contract, contractual management. Thank you. Well, I would like to add something about Creative Commons, though. I think it's a different platform about how people would like to share their idea and how people would like to make money from the idea. IP management is about commercialization of your ideas. That's one thing. It's not bad, but it's the way that you can utilize the ideas to your companies. But Creative Commons, the basic idea is that I would like to reduce the chance of imitation. I would like to increase knowledge sharing as well as knowledge creation. But in order to do that, I have to ensure that the people who are going to use my knowledge or ideas or whatsoever would quote my name, would refer to me as a person who invented, who created, who think about it. In that particular case, and only that particular case, would enhance the knowledge creations in the society. So I think you're talking about the two groups of people. Nothing bad about it, but it's just the, the principle underneath idea sharing and knowledge sharing, that's all. Uh, in Thailand, I think a couple of years ago, I and Ajahn, Dr. Gandhi, we used to work together. Um, we always put things like, you can, you can use it, but please, please refer to, <laughs> to our institute. Otherwise, it, it's just imitation. We would like to 
to increase knowledge sharing, you can use it, you can utilize it as long as you refer to us as the persons or as an organization who create these ideas. That is pretty common to me, right? Any more questions? We love questions. Look at our panelists. Dr. Salan love. <laughs> Dr. Ran mentioned that we love questions, but he doesn't like to answer. Hong <laughs> Sin. Ron. I, I always have question yeah, um, sure. because this is the best time to exploit all the experts on the, on the stage. So to Dr. Saran, I think the very first thing is um, now that you successfully uh, get crowdfunded, what is next step for you? So uh, hang, right? hang, hang on. Oh, okay. You, okay, you can answer first, then, then, then I can go on to the next okay. question. Before I forget the, the, the question, uh, the next step, uh, because as we are the uh, the research center in Thailand, uh, the next step as we, uh, we get uh, the crowdfunding uh, campaign uh, reached to our goal, uh, we move on by uh, again doing and looking at the technical terms. For example, we try to uh, uh, improve the process of manufacturing and we also try to come up with new products. So here is one of the, one of the products that we, we tell us. Right? But we also look for some new products and also uh, new manufacturing processes. And with those, we also try to pattern them. So it's like we have to, we already have the, the foundation of the pattern uh, before we uh, move into the crowdfunding. So we have to move a little bit more by uh, uh, creating a portfolios of the pattern. So both in the invention and also in the design and both in the products and also in the process of manufacturing. And we also uh, talk to our team and to think about the trademark. Mm. What is the name of the company? In, for example, if some of the teams uh, want to uh, spin off the company, mm. so they have the trademark or have the name of the company. Mm. So we also uh, work on that too. Okay. And uh, do you foresee that NSTDA would take the route of uh, crowdfunding as one of the key avenues to source for fund and to wait for funding from government since uh, you yes. kind of like test drive right. Tameka. Uh, in my opinion, uh, yes, uh, but uh, I think Dr. Suvipa can uh, answer this question. Uh, I, I can give her the mic. All right. <laughs> Actually, definitely, uh, this is the reason why NASDA is participating in, in, in this uh, event it, we, because we want to uh, find an alternative source that uh, will help our researcher to grow sustainably without depending on only the government budget. Okay. Uh, let me add some more thing. Uh, I think it's not, uh, the, not, it's not the only way we choose do. I think it's just the mechanisms that we can use. Uh, it's not only crowdfunding, it's also social enterprise that we can uh, use uh, with our research and development uh, projects. I'm still dying actually to do the project with Chiang Mai Hospital. Chiang Mai Hospital. The project that MTech, uh, MTech. they are introduced to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so the second question actually, uh, I, I like to ask, uh, uh, of course, uh, Pimai. Okay, so um, I think as a, as a lawyer uh, in practice, um, where do you see crowdfunding in this whole space? Does it change any landscape as far as legal is concerned? I mean, in terms of your legal practice, with crowdfunding taking shape into Thailand? Several, several plight. <laughs> there are a lot of difficulties of coping with crowdfunding because at, at this stage, 
that there is no specific law and regulation governing how we utilize crowdfunding effectively uh, from the lawyer point of view. Um, as, as I try, I try to list all the law and regulation related, there are several. Uh, even uh, we just talk about uh, crowdfunding and tra and th this is this is the the ownership of this is one of the example that state that it is it is the assets of the government. Actually, we have a specific law governing how the individual private sector enter into this investment with the government. It is very very tough law. Uh, it has a committee who who capable to decide rules how how the campaigner involved with the investor by using the government's asset. That is the other law apart from from SEC or far, apart from banking law. There's a lot. Uh, that means that mean in, in the future, probably we, we need to have a special task force mm -hmm. coming and reveal what is the specific law governing crowdfunding effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you committed to support crowdfunding? Because since you, you are not the Thailand SEC lawyer, so you are the public law, pri private sector lawyer. That's right. And uh, I think you are the first lawyer that is really seated up on this stage here. I'm really looking at hearing from you in terms of supporting crowdfunding because there are lots of contai here who are looking at, you know, either setting up even the neighbor, your neighbor, you know, as in like Dr. Gandhi is going to set up a crowdfunding platform. Do you foresee that, you know, you're gonna like have a team of people to really look into crowdfunding a little bit more serious and probably do something about from the legal practice to do something about crowdfunding. Yeah. At this time, what, what they could see, what, what, what is the proper uh, preparation for the lawyers, not only me, but the others, uh, we have to, to create awareness and knowledge among, among the lawyer in this field. Uh, and then uh, what we, have, we could do now is make a very good plan for the contractual management for cloud funding even though the law is not clear enough but in terms of in term of doing business together we could arrange a very good contract uh, coping terms and condition that 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 could ease uh, the parties we have three parties right the campaigner uh, the platform and the entrepreneurs uh, we, we could arrange a very good contract uh, mm -hmm. for them Okay. in order to, to, to cope with the existing law as, po as possible. Okay, Ka. And, and just one last question, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask ETDA, uh, at the, yes, um, because I, I know that you, 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 you don't look, you don't watch TV, you, now you watch YouTube, <laughs> you watch internet. I watch YouTube on my TV. Oh, okay, internet TV, okay. Um, you know, from, from your professional view, uh, what would be, uh, some measures that crowdfunding platform providers should be looking at. And th that is first thing. And second thing, you know, uh, is ETDA ready to actually even work with crowdfunding platform uh, providers in Thailand to support them, uh, to, you know, educate them in terms of the, from, from the cybersecurity angle? Because you talk about 67 million people is what you're looking at. Taking this morning conversation or yesterday's conversation where we talk about the online community that actually spend money online, the 2 million users or the 2 million, uh, the 2 million users that are online spending money, these could be also the 2 million users investing in crowdfunding. So, you know, I, I really like to hear ETDA's views. Right, thank you. Your question uh, is really question. long, and <laughs> I almost forgot what is the first part of your questions. <laughs> anyway, um, we look at the international standard. Um, we, to, to be honest, what I'm looking at crowdfunding is the same as other online activities. There will be some problem, and 
um, that is a model that I, I believe that we can adopt that car model and use uh, to solve this problem. Uh, in the ANC 12, in the UN um, you know, forum, they're talking about online dispute resolutions. The problem is not within the Thai constituents. It's not the platform of Thai people and also the Thai people using that platform. That will be crowdfunding with the global communities. So what, what will be the problem if we have the platform and the user, the supporter, the company is not Thai, and we have a supporter from the US, from France, from UK, and we have a problem with them. And there's no one governing laws to do that. So we have to have some platform that can that have dispute resolutions. And I think that, that, that also the model that we all look at, all right? First, for, to answer the first question, I think that we have to comply with all any other international standard, which I don't think that we have it at the moment. But I think that that has been discussing in many platforms, in many forums for us. And the second one is that um, I don't think that just one governing law in one country can solve that problem. So that is also, you know, the model proposed by UN in ANC 12 uh, is called ODR. That also the one of the platform that we send people to and participate in that forums. Right. And is there any questions from the floor? No. Right then. Okay. Yes. The lovely guy on my left hand side, second table, final row. So um, you mentioned that maybe perhaps we could have whitelisting and blacklisting to help build confidence in investors. So I think it's a very good way to have a very um, quick implementable way of um, building um, crowdfunding momentum in Thailand. So what do you think who should take care of this? Well, I guess. Well, doing backlist, I think that um, we are doing at the moment. Um, while is that um, those uh, entrepreneurs that register with the government, we can consider them at the whitelist. The backlist will be the other issues. But there's a lot of organizations in Thailand, including the law enforcement, trying to backlisting people <laughs> and also violating some personal, I would say, privacies. So we have to look at, you know, um, our angle when, do backlisting, when we are doing backlisting people. And um, who will be responsible doing both things? Um, in my ideal world, I would say public communities. And we already have that mechanisms. I, I'm not sure. yeah, um, if you ask me, my answer would be the crowd itself that do the job. I still believe the power of the crowd, and I, I do value the power of the government, though. But I just go back to very, um, you know, the original concept of crowdfunding, of crowdsourcing, because we would like to create the values with no barrier. So that, that is the whole idea. So you ask me who, would like, who, who should be responsible well, in the first stage, I think that people are here, you know, the crowd should regulate ourselves and, and drive alone. Just the other day, last week, I was lucky enough um, to invite friends um, who are the crowdfunding platform in Thailand. Um, afterward, right in that corner, Ang um, Ui um, from Sinwatana, you all know him from yesterday. Kun Egg from um, Dream Makers. We talked about that. And these are the, you know, um, there, 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 there are more crowdfunding provider out there, I'm sure. But I think it's time for us to get up, pack tight, and lead the direction that we want to be. Um, I didn't say the rule and regulation by the government is, is, is not what we're looking for. It's something that we need, but not to regulate once again, but to governing, guiding the way, and supervising the right directions. But yes, back to the very basic answer, the crowd should be responsible. I want to add one more thing. I think that the role of the government, the important thing is we have to facilitate. We have to monitor. We have to promote. But we shouldn't be a player. We shouldn't have the platform by ourselves. I speak for myself. <laughs> I speak by myself. <laughs> Not for Edda. 
Mr. Chayat, what would you like to keep coming? As, as the lawyer, um, I think, um, according to Thai society, um, to cope with rule and regulation is necessary. Uh, let, let's put into consideration of the regulators. Uh, what I could say is that uh, the government or, or, or the monitoring authority, whoever, okay, uh, need to give some suggestion not mandate, but some suggestion uh, what the crowdfunding society should have. For example, a dissemination of information. Uh, just list the categories uh, that this is, this is the minimal information that the companion must, must give to the platform. And then the platform it itself need to extend it like this. Uh, just, just recommendation. However, one thing that I think, I think we, we already discussed about fraud, uh, intentionally giving the fraud information must be penalized. It must have the imprisonment, must be, because it's very, very serious crime. It could guide you, it could steal your huge amount of money from not only one single individual, but public like this. Therefore, I think, as the lawyer, I have to put my recommendation such that. Thank you. Right, thank you. Dr. Salan, any ideas on the suggestions to regulators? Well, I think uh, I have, uh, in my view, probably it's not the regulation. I think we have, in Thailand, have uh, many experience about share. We call it share, right? And uh, we also have experience about uh, bad chair, right? So I think we can adapt that uh, experience from the uh, physical chair to the virtual chair, which is on the internet. I can just put it that way. Right. Okay, since I'm a moderator and uh, no one asks me anything, so I would like to put some comments as well. Academically speaking, I think crowdfunding is. Um, necessary mechanism for knowledge-based economy. Um, I've been in universities. I, I was with Thammasat University in Almahidon. I have seen students looking for ways to create their own business. You will be so surprised that students nowadays, they would like to work for big corporations. Ajahn, I got ideas. I would like to do this. I talked to my families. They didn't listen to me. I need money. How can I do it? I said, I'm sorry, I don't have money as well. <laughs> but their ideas are just significant in a way that you would surprise, you would be so surprised how can children, teenagers these days have such an ideas. Um, with crowdfunding as a platform, I think it will be a real mechanism to drive economic growth. We will see more innovations from crowdfunding. But regulators and other regulated bodies, as well as private sectors, and all those fraud and scam, I would agree that we can't, we can't kill them all. It, it's just like this. It's just normal. In the physical world and virtual world, what we can do is that we have to reverage the knowledge. We have to build a community that can increase the knowledge sharing. That is one of the most important things. Uh, we start this talk thanks to Security and Exchange Commission, Thanks to Crowdfunding Asia, thanks to all participants. Here is the, it's the first start for this uh, emerging community in Thailand. And from now on, what I can do is that I can ask my students to look for further information. You have to learn more about crowdfunding. You have to understand that you are taking risks when you are putting your ideas on the crowdfunding platform. In order to ensure that you will get the money, you have to provide sufficient information to make investors believe that you are the real thing. And at the same time, you have to disseminate your information to other stakeholders and community as well. This is what am I doing? Please believe me. Please refer these ideas as my idea. And I think it's only in that particular system or mechanism would enhance the ecosystem for crowdfunding. Right? Um, four more minutes, but I think you guys would like to have a cup of coffee? Yes. I would like to end this session now and uh, please give a round of applause to our panelists, please.
Ouais.